Okay, what's up? What's up, everybody? Welcome back to God's Choice. Today, I'm doing a podcast, like I told y'all today, on um, when you're cheating on God by cheating on who he put. Yeah, you know, I'm still trying to get everything together, messing up, as you can see. Good stuff, but we're going to get it. You know, the devil always working, trying to mess up things. But we're going to get it in order and stuff. But today, you know, God been messing with me all all week trying to get me to uh, just talk to talk to his people and stuff. Something that he told me in the message that he gave me for y'all, I really I didn't 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 understand. I was like, you know, what I'm saying, cause I'm not I ain't I ain't one when it came to you know relationships, you know. And stuff. I I wasn't, you know, in my young in my young days. I won't say I was, which I really really wasn't trying to, you know. Just I've been with people, but when I was with somebody, I was really I was faithful to that person and stuff. But you know, we're about to get ready to get into this discussion, and in this this um uh, perspective, uh, you know, a woman whose husband has cheated on her and. And in, in this, at the same time, you know, you got where it's not it's not only husbands that cheat; it's also women that out there out there that cheat also and stuff. But um, a lot a lot of times we uh instead of we we don't don't think of the 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 long run of having a future with somebody and being with that one person and respecting that one person. As, as you should should be, a lot of relationships get you know messed up for for selfish reasons and stuff, and, and it's not it's nothing good good in that and stuff. Which we got to think, you know what I'm saying? You you got you got to be happy with what God gave you. You can't be out here being being selfish and trying to be with this woman and being with, being with that woman. Be with who God gave you and be with that person and. Respect that person and, you know, help raise your kids and watch your kids grow up together. A lot of people would love to be, what's up, Rebecca Clark? A lot of people would love to be with a person that, you know, who would love them and, you know, ain't got to worry about stepping out on them, cheating on them, anything like that. And it's crazy because the other day, this this girl, she hit me up on my uh, Facebook and it was crazy. Cause I tell I tell females all the time, man. I ain't, they be like, "What you on here looking for?" I be like, "What you mean? What I'm looking for? I'm not looking for nothing. I'm on here doing God's work. What up, cuz?" That's the. And she was like, "Well, I, I really like you." That's the. So I, I talked to her. I said, "You know, I said I'm not interested." And she just started. She really started talking. To one, one, one trying to holler at me, but I still told her I'm not interested. But it's crazy how things occurred, and she tried to lie about it. Found found out, you know what I'm saying, that she actually engaged to some some guy. And I said, I said, baby girl, I said, there's nothing good in it. I said, you engaged and you up on here trying to talk to other man. I said, you can't. I said, you can't do that, man. And she tr- she told me sorry, and I told her, I said, you don't owe me an apology. You owe your uh, boyfriend or whatever an apology. And stuff I said, because I'm not nobody to you. And stuff I said, but just know God don't like what you're doing. And stuff. And I didn't, you know, after that, I didn't really hear, hear much hear much from her. Hey, uh, um, and stuff. But, uh, you know, it's a, lot, a lot of people get caught up in the ways of the world and not being satisfied with what God gave you. What you got, you got to be, you can't, you can't always be stuck in the same situation, wanting to do the same thing, because there's nothing good in it. It's a lot of people, a lot of things that happen in this world today, where you know, with the cheat, with the cheating, it's people killing because of the cheating, and all that when it's when it's all not worth it and stuff. But we about to, I'm about to get ready to start talking and reading y'all some of the uh, scriptures and stuff that you know God gave me. To talk talk about with y'all and stuff, just to uh, help help somebody in their relationship and be better and know that man, you you not you know when you cheating, 
You're not just cheating on, on your on your woman or your man. You cheating you cheating on God also, cause He's the one that gave you what He gave you. And you got to think about that in the long run and stuff. You know, can't be selfish all the time. You got you got to grow up sometimes. Is what I'm trying to tell you. But uh, it's in, in this article that was written. It's talking about the perspective of a woman whose husband has cheated on her. It is certainly not the case that only husbands cheat on their wives, which that's true also and stuff, because, you know, wives cheat also and stuff. But perhaps a second article with a perspective of a cheap man, uh, we look at the issue from the perspective of a woman whose husband has broken his vow to uh, suppose from a, from just to uh, you. Your, your vow is not supposed to be broken. When you, when you make that that vow to a woman and stuff, that, that vow right there is sacred itself. And that's that's something that you got to think think about and stuff in the long run. But the, it's a, the truth is there isn't a married man on the, on the face of this earth who hasn't had lustful thoughts about someone other than his wife. And it's, and it's not just, you know what I'm saying, talking about just the the husband, because the, the, the wives do it also and stuff, and, and everybody I'm sure knows that. But, you know, according to Matthew, every, every wife is a vic, victim of adultery, if you understand, understand what he's saying right there. But that's not really the kind of adultery that uh, you were thinking about when you uh, – read about this. You're talking about an actual affair. You're talking about finding the strength to offer forgiveness to someone who has sex with another um, man's woman outside of marriage. Or perhaps you're talking about emotional connection that your husband has developed with a colleague at work. It started out innocently enough, just friends, but developed into an affair of the heart which had less to do perhaps with physical sex than an emotional bond in either case. Whether purely a sexual liaison or emotional intimacy or both, you're talking about whether or not you could ever again make yourself vulnerable to him, trust him, be intimate with him, or have sex with him. And that's that's true, y'all, because a lot, a lot of times when... Uh, you, you get, get your feelings start to change and stuff. You know, thing, thing, nothing, nothing is re really the same after you after you finding out that you know the person that you gave your heart to, your love to, don't 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 creep out there and been with somebody else. You start look, looking at them different, not wanting to, you know, and get have have sex or kiss on them no more, and then you. A lot of us, as we know, be, be ready to uh, beat, beat somebody up, beat them upside their head or whatever and stuff, which it ain't nothing good in that either because that can have you to where you where you end up. You don't did something that you shouldn't have did because you got so mad or whatever and stuff, and you don't cause call the problem. And, and now you got to deal with the fact of losing your kids and stuff like that. That's why I say you know, it ain't it ain't relationship today it's hard it's hard not really if you think about it and stuff there's there's hard hardly in the world we live in today it's hard to find somebody who is committed and being faithful to their better half today and stuff that's why me i i really i ride solo i don't even be out here really look, looking for women like that because I haven't, I haven't found found no one who I know that's gonna be faithful to me, like I'm being faithful to them. So I just, you know, I'm, I'm good, I'm chilling and stuff. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna make a joke with y'all right quick. Really, shoot it. If I, if I get lucky, I'm I'm really really looking for me a 40 year old virgin, something sacred, something that I, that I, that I know that somebody who's been waiting waiting and saving themselves all their life and stuff. But you know. That's just, just what it is and stuff. A lot of times, you know, growing up, me and my cousins and and all that, we used to go go to Walmart just looking for women. We were two two days, and it, it was something, and I don't know what it was about it, but we going 
going to Walmart looking looking at women, being being what I guess what they would say men is back then and stuff. But uh, you know. And then I'm gonna uh, get to this other scripture where it tells in Ephesians it tells us to be kind to one another, forgiving one another. As God Christ forgave you, the gospel writer Mike says, whenever you stand praying, forgive if you have anything against anyone so that your father also who is in heaven may forgive you your trespasses. But the real question is, how could you forgive him? It's one thing to be told you should, but a whole different thing to know how you could possibly find the room in your heart to move beyond such a violent trust. And that's real, y'all. Cause believe me, you know, going through being being with what I, who I was with for eight eight years, and you know, after she cheated on me, still still to this day, you know, she asked asked me why, why you still talk about something that happened eight years ago. Cause it, it's it's still in my heart, but I know I gotta at the same time, you know, I gotta forgive her for what for what she did. And stuff, and you know, it just that thing. Like I say, it ain't. It's not. It's not easy when when you in in the relationship world and stuff. When you really love somebody and that person, you know, she ends up cheating on you, and you lose lose your trust in that person. Things change, and not nothing really is the same about it. But you you gotta you gotta learn to get get over. It your past and move on in the future. You can't keep holding on to, you know, a grudge or something that happened and stuff because it, it ain't nothing that's going to really come out good from it and stuff is what, you know, God has showed me. But, you know, God's still working on me, trying to get me right, you know. After, you know, I never, I never, who would, who would have thought that I would be here talking, talking to God's people profiting to his people, giving them courage and trying to lift them up, lift their spirits up. I, ne I never once in my life thought for the for the longest really y'all, uh, I was running from from what God had for me for years. Every day of my life I was I was living to die. Dealing with my situation and what I had. It wasn't I mean it just but you know God, you know, he he been showing me things that I ne never thought I w thought I would even see yeah. and stuff, and he's still showing, showing me and giving me giving me the strength to do the things that he want me to do and stuff. But um, I'm just you know trying trying just trying to uh, speak his his word and lift everybody up and just to make the world better and to give him his praise so everybody else can uh, show him the love that. He, that he that he needs and stuff, cause y'all y'all gotta understand, man. We can't we can't do nothing with God without God and stuff. We we basically perish and stuff, and I and I had to find find that out myself and stuff. Cause, you know, after running for for years, what up, bro? Running from years of what he was trying to show me, even though I didn't want to see it. He had to bring it to you. you. Can't one thing I found out: you can't run away from what God has for you, no matter what. That stuff. He gon' he gonna get to you one way or another. That stuff. It took probably over, over twenty some years before I before I finally listened to him. That stuff. Cause I wasn't trying trying to listen to him. Like I said, I was every day. I was I, I was ready to go. I was ready to sue. After my doctor told me that fit, I wouldn't live to be fifteen. I was ready. I was ready to die every day. Wait, wait, waiting on, waiting on my, uh, on my time. I wasn't out here worried about saving money. I was blowing money, spending money on women, doing all, 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 all this and that and stuff. But enough, enough talking about me. Let's, let's, uh, finish and stuff. You know, just talking about, you know, really relationships and th things that you should and you should not do. And stuff in your relationship. If you got you married to a woman, man, keep your vow to that woman. You married to a man, keep your vow to that man. Cause that that's a commitment. 
not only to them, but that's a commitment to God Himself and stuff. And you can't you can't be blessed doing the wrong thing if you if you know what I'm saying and stuff. Cause God, you know, He He sees all and He knows all and stuff. So don't don't ever think that you that you hiding the wool or whatever over God's eyes because you're not and stuff. I don't care. You go to Walmart, wherever you go, and stuff to where you trying to creep creep on on a, on a woman when you know you got a woman at the house. You see, and he just sit, he's sitting there at the same time he crying because he trying to figure out why why would you uh betray your wife like that son that he gave you that was so precious a gift that he gave you that was you know honorable son that you was supposed to uh carry. Cater to and take care of and stuff. And we gotta learn we gotta learn to do more of that, man. Love, love your woman. Love, love your husband. And stuff. Honor, honor what God gave to you. And stuff. Because he didn't have to. And stuff. We we get too caught caught up in one just looking at cause, cause you might think that chick might be she could be the baddest thing in the world. But you don't know how she is. A lot of y'all will mess up your relationship at home to go be with something else. And next thing you know, you ain't even with it. Because that ain't even what you thought it was. That ain't what God had put in your life. And just like that, he took it from you. Because it was nothing. That's the... I remember this one incident where, uh, I think it was in Biloxi, where this, this, this girl, she ended up, being with this dude, I think, that she bought from uh, Jamaica or what, whatever, wherever she bought him from. And he, him, he he really play, play, played with the girl or whatever to where he, he set, set, it, set it up to where he can end up. All he was trying to do was move his family back to, uh, to the States and stuff and all that. And, you know... The situation that end up end up occurring end up being a deadly situation, you know, all uh, all for nut for nothing. That's so that's why, man. Me, I t- I try to do people right. I ain't, I ain't out here trying to mess over no woman. You know me. I try to love love. When if I'm with somebody, I'm gonna love you. I'm gonna make sure you good. We one hundred. We gonna do this together. We gonna build together and make make our lives better and make our family lives better. And stuff, and that's all, you know. I'm about about doing, but you know, let me uh, get on to the next uh, scripture that well, not even that's really it says the first step to blast the situation with life. Paul tells us in Ephesians, take no part in unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose. This means not only demanding a full revealing, revealing a extent of the affair, but accounting from your husband and why he did what he did. To say this is difficult work is the understatement of the century. But if there is to be any hope or actually finding room within your soul to forgive your husband, the wound needs to be fully cleaned out. That starts with a blast of light if he's willing to come fully clean about what he did and why he did it. That's the first step. Truth is built on truthfulness, difficult truth, as hard as it leaves hope for reconciliation. Where there is no truth, there is no hope. Of course, going through this process alone can be treacherous. It's easy to wonder if you miss clues along the way or in some we failed to provide the relationship he looking he's look, he was looking for. A Christian counselor can guide you towards an understanding of adultery that discards these misconceptions of cause and effect. The truth is even solid happy marriage aren't inoculated from the pits of potential infidelity. Seattle Christian counselor experience counselors on hand to help you through this difficult time in your life. Some people think cheating is only wrong within the marriage. Y'all hear that? Y'all hear that? They say, some people say that cheating is only wrong in the marriage. And y'all, y'all probably don't even get what they saying right there when they say that. 
And my nose all running. But it says, it is also sinful to cheat on your significant other, even if you are not married to them, y'all. Y'all hear that? So even if you out there thinking that, you know, that you out there just because you ain't married that you can cheat and do it, it don't work like that. God, God he's still going to hold you for, for whatever you do in this lifetime. And that's why you, we got to change our ways, y'all. We got to change our ways, telling y'all and stuff, because, you know, even in this pandemic, we still doing the same thing. People still still out, out club, clubbing and stuff. When there's people out here losing their lives and stuff, we got to change, y'all. For real, for real. I mean, I, I just, man, I want to be, be able to, if y'all y'all knew the situation I was in when I when I had corona a month ago, and not only having corona but I have had my own situation which which made it worse, it was nothing nice. And if I if I could, I promise y'all if I could, I would go through that just to not see y'all have to go through that. I would go through that for each and every one of y'all for real for real. That's the but that that's the, I said I don't wanna I got it because I don't wanna be on here all night. That's the but here it comes in Matthew 5, 27 to 28. It says, you have heard that it was said, you shall not commit adultery. But tell you that anyone who looks at a woman lustfully has already, <coughs> has already committed adultery in, a, in, 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 in his heart. And it says, if you gave your life to Jesus Christ, you are a new creation. If you used to cheat before accepting Jesus, you can't go back to your old sinful life. Christians don't follow the world, we follow Christ. If the world is cheating on their boyfriends and girlfriends, we don't imitate that. And that's real, y'all. You know? and, and, and a lot of us do that. A lot, a lot, of, a lot of us think, it, think it's, it's cool because, you know, your homeboy or your home homegirl might be out there cheating on, so you want to do the things that that they doing. But when it comes down to it, what 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 is good good in it? It's it's nothing good in that at all. I'm stuff, and I'm telling y'all, man, we we got we just we got to do better when it comes to being in relationships and being with somebody. A lot of us wonder why why we uh can't can't find nobody, cause God not blessing us to find nobody, cause we won't do right. And I and I was one of the ones that that wouldn't do right. And so I'm, I'm, I'm still, you know, but I'm still I'm waiting on God to bless me with who He gonna put in my life. Cause that person, she gonna be, she gonna she gonna she gonna she gonna know how much I love her, for real. But um, nose all running. I still can't 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 stand. That's good. But um, and then we come down to Ephesians 22, 24, where it tells you, you were taught with regard to your former way of life to put off your old self, which is being corrupted by its de deceitful desires to be made new in the attitude of your minds and to put on a new self created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. And then 2 Corinthians 5 and 7, it said, this means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life is gone. A new life is, has begun. And that's real, y'all. That's real. I was, that's how, when I went through, you know, like I said, I, I was running from God. For the longest, I was running from God. I didn't want to see what he was trying to, trying to show me. It was years ago. Like I told you, I went into this um, beauty salon with, with my ex. And, um, you know, she, um, when I walked up in there, the women, they just stopped what they were doing. And it was looking like you just brought so much power up into this room. And I was like, how I bring so much power into this room? I'm not God. I can't do that. 
and that stuff, and they say, you just, you have so much power within you. They say, God is trying to tell you something. But I, I ain't want to see it. I ain't want to look, look at nothing. Because like I said, I was, man, me, I was living to die every day. I wasn't worried about this, you know, especially after my, losing my brother. <coughs> I just, just knew that I, w- I wasn't going to be long after him and stuff, but... To be blessed, to see 45 years, it's a blessing, y'all. And he's still blessing me. Because I, when I was laying there, thought I was on my deathbed, when I when I felt like my soul was leaving my body, I was in tears. He assured me that everything was going to be okay. But see, what he was doing, he was cleansing my body from the old spirit, the badness that I had up in me, that he had to get up out of me for me to be able to see what he was trying, trying to do <laughs> to change my life and to make it better and to make it whole and stuff. And it was, it was, a, it was scary. It was really scary. <laughs> and then it'll come down, we're going to get John 1 and 11 to where it said, dear friend. <laughs> yeah, sorry about it. I don't know why I'm sneezing like that. Like it's. It's better than what I got. I hate this. That's good. I don't have to have this way, but I don't like this. I don't know why my nose wanna be running. <laughs> why is running? Messing up on the podcast. I can sneeze. John 11 where it, it says, Dear friend, do not imitate what is evil, but what is good. Anyone who does that, does what is good, is from God. Anyone who does what is evil has not seen God. That's deep. That's real deep. What I say, man, you got to do, you got to do good unto others. Just like you would want others to do good unto you. That's good. And it says, Christians are the light, and the devil is darkness. How can you mix light with darkness? Everything in the light is righteousness, is righteous and pure. Everything in darkness is evil and not pure. Adult- adultery is evil, and cheating has nothing to do with the light. Whether you're having sex or not, you know what you're doing is wrong, and it should be done. If you're supposed to get married, Tomorrow, and you make out with another another woman on purpose. Can you really tell yourself, "Well, we are not married anyway"? Seems dark to me. What kind of example are you setting for yourself? Mm. Uh, that's real, real deep if you think about it. Real deep. That's good. That's why I said, man, love, respect, respect, and love what God gave to you. That's good. Even y'all, y'all young boys out here that 
out here. You, I know you're going to live your life, but man, when God gave you, gave you that woman, that girl, that girl, whoever you be with, man, treat, treat that woman like, like she's somebody. Don't have her and her feelings feeling bad because she don't, she don't end up, you know, being with you, don't have a child with you, and then, you know, dog, dog her out and making her feel like she ain't nothing. So she's doing all this crying, feeling bad for herself, losing her mind, ready to do things to herself that, that can hurt her. And, her. and not only hurt her, but hurt her child too, to where, you know, she can lose that child and stuff. We just, we gotta, we gotta think about the things that we do and stuff. Cause it's, it's not good and cheating. It's not good and cheating at all. And that's why I say I try, I try to be respectful to any woman I'm with to let her know that she don't have to wear everywhere about getting cheated on. Cause I'm not, I'm not into that and stuff. I'm just, you know, even, even, cause I had, I ain't gonna lie, I had a lot of evilness in me. And stuff, and it was times when I was young in my in my twenties, which it was women that I should have been with. But I was I was in the party life. I was partying, doing this and that, involved in gangs and doing and smoke. I was smoking. Yeah, I used to smoke. Used to smoke. Won't smoke no more. And God, God taught me a lesson on that smoking. Won't smoke no more. And stuff, but I, I don't, I don't been out there. I ain't, I ain't no shame. I can't, can't act like you know I'm perfect, cause I've never been, never been perfect. You know I'm not, I'm not God. And stuff, you're the only per perfect person that I know. But we trying, trying to finish up this podcast, cause my nose running, irritated right now. But it says in John six and seven. This is the message we heard from Jesus, and now I declare to you, God is light, and there is no darkness in him at all. But if we are living in the light, as God in the light, then we have fellowship with each other. And the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. And then in 2 Corinthians 6 and 14, do, do not be yoked together with unbelievers. For what do righteousness and wickedness have in common? Or what fellowship can light have with darkness? Mm. And then it comes to deception. One of the seven things God hates is lies. If you're cheating, you're basically living a lie and deceiving your boyfriend or girlfriend. As Christians, we are not to deceive people and lie. The first sin was because the devil deceived Eve. In Colossians 3, 3, 9 and 10, Hello? do not lie to one another, for you have put off the old self with its habits, 10, and have put on the new self. This is the new being with God is creator, is constantly renewing in his own image in order to bring you to you full knowledge of himself. Can you hear me? And then it says in Proverbs 12 and 22, lying lips are an abomination to the Lord. But those who act faithfully right. are his delight. Hmm. That's real. Why you get mad? That's real, real. I'm gonna say, man, y'all. I just, man, I want, I want everybody to live peaceful and harmony. I want everybody to be able to, you know, not, not to have to worry if you're gonna bust hell wide open if you're gonna go to heaven. I want everybody to be able to go to heaven. And to be able to, you know, God to be able to be proud of them when they step foot up there to them gates of heaven. And you know that you ain't got to worry about nothing because you've been doing right by others and doing what, you know, God told you to do and stuff. And that's what, that's what it's all about. That's why we got to, we got to fix our ways, man. Even if, a lot of, a lot of us ain't going to take it serious and stuff, but man, we just, we got to do right. And, and what and by God's word and what He's telling us like to said, do, I, I and stuff. Because we don't, we don't have I our lives won't be nothing. I said, like I said, a lot of and stuff. And then He cracked them days to heaven to come down. It ain't gonna be a good thing. What I was going through. It ain't gonna be a good thing to see him see to see him cry because he know what you what you've been doing 
and not doing what you should have been doing all, all your life and stuff. And you got to gotta give him some of your time and stuff. I know a lot of us don't, don't like, really think so, like when I, when but I'm you really got to give a guy some, some of your time. When I read, read the Bible. Talk to him. And stuff, you know. Thank, thank him for Don't thank him just for the things that he gave you. Thank him for, you know, wake, wake, waking up in the morning. Let, let, let him know how much you thank him and, and love him because he didn't have to let you wake up from, from your sleep. You could you could have been, been slumped, slumped over on that, on that bed, not moving, staying, staying still. And stuff, but he decided to give you another chance. And that's, that's something that we got to think about. Everything that he does is for a reason. He get, he give us chance after chance mm -hmm. after chance to do right, but we still won't do right. So and that it, and it, that it, just it ain't good. Just how it's are. like we plan we plan yeah, we plan yeah. the game yeah. with God. Cut my pot, and that ain't something that you want to do. You know, when you cheat, when that ain't something that you want to do. The person uh, I'm trying to get ready to finish God, this because I've been on here for a while now. In Proverbs. 12, 19 to 20, it says, truthful lips endure forever, but a lying tongue lasts only a moment. Deceit is in the heart of those who plot evil, but those who promote peace have joy. And then we come to James 4 and 7. So whoever knows the right thing to do and fails to do it for him, it's a sin. That's deep. That's real deep. For if you if you know if you know to do the right thing and you're not doing the right thing, about about too much stuff. Come on, no, come on. I was telling him I said I really. And then in Luke eight and seventeen, for all that is secret will eventually be brought into the open, and everything that is concealed will be brought to light and made known to all. You gotta forgive, mm. you know, that's what and in Galatians 5, 19 and 23, when you follow the desires you know, of your sinful nature, the results are very clear. Yeah, Sexual well, um, immorality, you know, impurity, <laughs> lustful pleasures, <laughs> idolatry, sorcery, hostility, mm -hmm. quarreling, jealousy, outbursts of anger, selfish ambition, the you know, sensing, the vision, I mean, I but the Holy Spirit you know, produces the kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against these things. And then in Galatians 6, 7, 8, do not be deceived. God is not mocked for whatever one sows that he also reaps. For the one who sows to his own flesh will from the flesh reap corruption, but the one who sows to the spirit will from the spirit reap eternal life. Hmm. That's deep, y'all. That's deep. But I just, you know what I'm saying, I wanted to come up on here, do a little podcast with y'all and stuff, give y'all, you know, the words that God gave me to get to y'all that he's been putting on. I've been writing down and doing stuff just to share with y'all a little information because I, I want to be able to help help y'all out, help y'all to do better in y'all relationships, to know better in your relationships and how to and do right by, you know, what God gave to you because mm -hmm. that's what it's all about. Don't be out here, you know what I'm saying, going to Walmart, trying to, trying to, when you got a woman at the house, you know, you going to Walmart, you're trying to be, with another Cause I'm, uh, little hot man that I'm you don't see, which is, which is only gonna gonna be hot, trying to hot for a minute. You gonna get yourself in trouble with and stuff. We just we gotta do right, y'all. We gotta do right and take care take care of the women's heart. It's all about taking care of the women's heart, doing right by them, showing them the love that they need and deserve. Cause they need a good man in their life and stuff. You know. It just, it's real, man, and stuff, and I just, you know, I appreciate y'all. Today, my podcast, I'm still, I got got a lot of stuff I got to do. I still, I got to get my 
TV, you know, I was going to be up on here singing and stuff with y'all today, but, you know, I voice all, can't, can't really do it today and stuff, but, you know, I got, I got a lot of things that I'm going to be doing and stuff in my, uh, let me see, for my word tomorrow, that guy, he woke me up, woke me up to from my nap today. He gave me the word that we're going to, that I'm going to be uh, speaking on tomorrow, which is going to be... Uh, I don't know what it is. Probably cause I drink, I drink a lot of water and I, and I eat more. You know? I should remember. I don't know. I, don't know. I used remember. to eat probably once a day. I eat. I was just talking to my niece about it. I ain't on. This ain't my regular song. So yeah, I'm supposed to be coming like up. Your body trying to adjust to everything. Oh yeah, that's what it is. Tomorrow it's gonna be. The topic gonna be it's called being selfish when listening to God's word, and we're gonna just talk about the what the things people do when you know when God has the man of God talking to us and and giving us the word and stuff and the thing. It's a it's a, a lot of things I'm gonna, I'm gonna be talking about and probably have some of y'all laughing and stuff and all that. But you know, you know what? If we're gonna get in that word tomorrow, probably probably. Tomorrow I'm gonna try to have it. I want to do it. Do some singing. I might, I might uh, put, do my song, perform my song for y'all. I don't know. I'm still trying to get that together. I'm having a, having a hard time breathing when I'm trying to rap sometimes and stuff. But and we're gonna just have fun with it and stuff. Cause that's what it's all about and stuff. But I just had to come up on here because I gave me. He just want, wanted me to say a little something to y'all to try to change y'all. What's going on in your relationship to make your relationship better? To show you things that you should be doing and you should not be doing when you with somebody that he gave to you and stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like I say, and for y'all women too, man, y'all pr protect them. Because cause us men, we might not show it, but we get hurt behind some of the things that y'all do too and stuff. So y'all y'all don't be out here, man. Y'all just look, respect what God gave to you and stuff because that's what, what it's about. You know, raise them kids, make sure them kids okay. Let them kids have both of their parents in the same house, house that they can and stuff to where they ain't got to break up over, you know, cheating and, and all that and stuff. The kids, you know, it's all about the kids and they love, you know, having both of their parents in, in the same household to enjoy their time and stuff with them and stuff and all that and stuff. But um, thank y'all for coming. But you know, like always, I'm going to pray for y'all before I get ready to get up out of here and stuff, because it wouldn't be right if I didn't pray for y'all, especially in this pandemic situation. There's a lot of people that's still going through it in a pandemic situation, a lot of people struggling to, you know, people are still not working, trying to make ends meet. It's, it's a hard not world out here right now, but things going to get better, especially with so I, what, what, what God trying to show me the things that I'm about to do things is gonna get gonna be all right. Yeah, Tell you yeah, yeah. my stuff. I got I got big plans for everybody. Things that I'm gonna be able to do for everybody. And so just to show y'all the love that I have for y'all, cause you know that's what it's all about. And stuff. But I'm about to pray for y'all right quick before I get ready to get up out of here, get off of this.